Hi everyone. Uh, this uh, presentation about observability and uh, instrumentation via open telemetry. So uh, from what you can see here, this is a stethoscope. So observability, what is that? It's essentially about understanding how something works on the inside by looking at the signals that something emits on the outside of a body. So uh, typically in medicine, you can use a stethoscope to understand roughly how someone is doing on the inside by measuring the heartbeat, for example. Uh, so if we look at the word open telemetry, uh, so it's first open as in open source. Uh, it's part of the CNCF uh, uh, um, community. Uh, tele from Greek tele, remote, and um, metri from Greek metro, measure. So it's essentially an open source version for doing uh, remote measurements. So we're going to look at four key data signals first, and I'm going to give some examples of that, and then I'm going to do a demonstration also in Python. So we're going to look at um, logs, metrics, traces, and baggage. So first, logs. I think most of you are aware, uh, have some experience of logs. They've been around the most time of these four key data signals. But it's, it's essentially, it describes the context about something. You want to more context about something that has happened. A human example could be that you have a diary that you write what happened a particular day, and then you can go back one year later to understand what happened, uh, for example, today. Um, a system example could be that you do a git commit, and then you get contextual information that a file has changed. Um, couple of insertions or deletions have been made. And I often see developers, they confuse uh, logs with metrics. And I think uh, an easy way to remember it is you, if you look at the two first characters, uh, metrics is about measurements. They start with ME. Uh, so it's typically, typically something you want to track over time also. A human example would be that you measure the blood glucose level or the temperature, for example. You're typically not interested in the temperature right now. You're more interested in how it has changed over time. Whereas with logs, typically you're more interested in one particular log and what information that provides at that particular time. Some system examples of metrics could be request size, for example. And then traces are more like sequence of event information. A human example could be that you describe what happened between lunch and dinner or what happened from uh, breakfast this time until you're here at this conference. Um, and in open telemetry, it's, um, uh, you have two uh, key um, um, words here. You have spans and traces. So Trace is a collection of span, and a span is a unit of work or operation. And finally, baggage, and that's a bit like luggage. When you travel, you bring along something from one destination to another destination. It's a bit similar here. You have baggage. You have a key value pair that you want to reside along a particular span in your trace. So that was a quick overview and now I'm going to give some uh, a demo change here so what I have here is uh, based on um, on an open source project that I have on GitHub. It's called the Open Telemetry Demo. So you can access this later if you want to reproduce this or try it at home. But essentially, I'm going to demonstrate four different scenarios. We have um, one scenario where we don't do any instrumentation, one scenario where we do some uh, manual instrumentation, and one use case where we do automatic uh, instrumentation, and then finally a mix of automatic and manual instrumentation. 
and I'm doing this in Python because it's easy to get started. Um, so the application I have is an application that adds two numbers, first and second. It's quite simple, it's based on Flask, which is a micro web framework. Um, so it easily gets, uh, allows you to get started. And then if I do like this, I switch to this um, um, application and write Python. So here in the right corner, uh, you can see the application is running. And then uh, here I have a simple browser. So I do a request against this server. It's exposed on port 3000. So I add it to, it has one route add. And then I add the first and second number. In this particular case, we can add six and two. And then we get eight and return. Um, but you can see we don't get any logs or traces. We don't get anything. We, do, we don't get any insights into what's happening in this application. So if I... Uh, close this and if we switch to version 2 now. So the difference between the version 1 and version 2 now is that in version 2 I have done some manual instrumentation. So I have used uh, um, some libraries in Python from OpenTelemetry. And then I have done some configuration here. So we need to specify a provider um, and we need to specify which method we want to send the spans onwards. Usually you send them to a collector. In this case, because it's a demo purpose, uh, I send it to the console just so we can see the output in, in this um, terminal. And uh, you set a tracer provider. You define that the tracer provider should be the provider that we created earlier. And um, what we can see then in the route here, in the method for adding the numbers, we specify that we want to start a span, which we call a request to add numbers. And uh, basically that's it. If we, if we run this version, and now if we specify to add two numbers, for example, six and one, we get seven. Uh, what you can see here now is that we got um, output in the console for a, for a span. So we can see here that the, the name of the span is the, is the same name as we specified here. We uh, named it request to add numbers. And by default, you get quite a lot of information. You can see that it was made from Python via OpenTelemetry. You can see the start and end time of this particular span, you, so you can understand how long time it took to add these two numbers, these particular numbers. So if we continue, let me clear this. And if we move to version three, let me see here, version three, we will do, um, manual instrumentation. So let me see what is the difference between version three and version two. Okay, so let me close this. Right, so what we will do in version three here is we'll do even more manual instrumentation. We will add a log, so, so when you create a span, you can uh, add event information to the span also. In this case, when we add the numbers, we will add to the span which numbers we added. And we do that 
by um, using the span and adding an event, we call it log in this case. And um, then specify the first and second number. So if we run this again, version three, F, if we add uh, six and three, we get nine. So what you can see here in this, in this particular span now is that we got um, this uh, metadata. We got the information about in this particular span, we added even more information. And we added that we added um, six and three in this particular case. So let's go back here. And what we will do now is automatic instrumentation of version one. So open telemetry, it has automatic instrumentation. It essentially means that you run open telemetry instruments. Um, and it's available for a couple of languages, Python, Java, Node, Ruby, and .NET. And the supported libraries are listed on the OpenTelemetry website. And the way we are going to do this is that we close this. And we, so what we do now is we go back to version one, which was not, it didn't have any instrumentation at all. And then we run open telemetry instruments and we specify that the tracer exporter should be the console. So we send the output to the console again for demo purposes and uh, ex uh, export the metrics also to the console and then specify Python running the, this particular app. So if you remember the last time we ran this, we didn't get any output, we didn't get any logs or traces. So if we now again uh, add um, six and one, for example, seven, uh, now we got this fully automatic. So we can see that a get request was done against the add route. We can see the start and end time again. And we can see Python uh, open telemetry. We can also see which uh, SDK version was used. So you get a lot of information automatically. So if we close. Mm. Mm. Exactly. And I did that with the open telemetry instrument. So open telemetry has methods and functionality for doing automatic instrumentation of uh, Python, for example, and um, uh, these languages. For now, it has support for these languages for automatic instrumentation. Uh, so I'm closing that. So what I'm going to demonstrate now is that we can do a mix of manual and automatic instrumentation. So this is version four. So this is quite simple. It's very simple. It's quite similar to the first version. We, the only thing we specify now is the tracer. We specify where traces are going to be sent. And in this particular case, we specify that the, um, uh, a span of add sum. So the add route doesn't have any instrumentation at all, but the actual method for adding the numbers, there we specify that we want a span and we specify that we want to include the first and second number. So let's see how this works. Um, once again, I copied this and I switched to version four. And I run it with open telemetry instruments. 
So once again, we do six plus five, for example, then we get 11. And now we should get an auto-generated span. And in addition, um, well, actually now we get two spans. We get one for adding the sum. And we also get an auto-generated span for the route add. And um, what we also can see that the add sum span that we specify that we want, it has a parent ID. And you can see the parent ID is the same as the ID of uh, the route, the add route span. Hmm. Because they should, uh, let's see if we can find the ID. The parent ID is 0x7. Zero x seven, yeah. So essentially, we did automatic instrumentation of the entire application, and then added one extra span inside a method, and then the automatic instrumentation could uh, understand or could tell the user that the parent span that they belong together. So. That's essentially what I wanted to demonstrate, but I think this raises three things. So first of all, you can see a lot of data is generated. We only did a sim simple request here, but we got a huge amount of tracing data. So the first issue is you want to store this efficiently. And the second thing is, obviously, you don't want to do this manually, you don't want to keep doing things in the console and relating things like we have done now. So you want a, an efficient tool for visualizing the relationships between the traces. Uh, and the third thing is you don't necessarily want to do this manually, the instrumentation. You typically want to do this automatically because it doesn't pollute the code, but it's Com uh, increases the complexity of the code. So uh, for storing the spans efficiently, there is um, Grafana Tempo. Uh, it's, um, and look here, Grafana Tempo. I'm not affiliated with Grafana in any way, but I can recommend it. I like it. It's a tool that enables you to efficiently store a large amount of data. And um, so I will do a quick demo here. So I have, um, so I have cloned this uh, repository locally. We can skip that now. I haven't. I don't have the authentication figured for this yet. But it, essentially, it enables you to efficiently visualize the different metrics and see the correlations between the metrics. And uh, about doing automatic instrumentation, then I would recommend that if you use uh, Kubernetes, that there there are operators for for doing uh, instrumentation, automatic instrumentation. Mm. So, yes, that's it. Any questions right now? You don't have any questions. Maybe I can ask you, do you, do you find the tracing useful? Anyone who has any um, um, particular use case you can think of? Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, I guess it depends. You have to start with something. You, so you have to do, start with automatic uh, instrumentation, I would recommend. And then, depending on the situation, you can enhance with manual instrumentation where you see a particular situation that you need to troubleshoot more in detail. But I understand what you mean. You come to a situation where you would like to replicate it, but you can't necessarily do that afterwards. At the same time, you don't want to store data about everything because it could uh, uh, take too much data. Yeah. Uh, yes? Mm. Good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.